Hey everyone and welcome to the May Sew Along. This month we will be sewing the Butterfly Table Runner. In this video we will be showing you how to make the blocks as well as the construction of the table runner. However, we do suggest that you also refer back to our more detailed photographed instructions when sewing your table runner. I really love this month's sew along because it's such a versatile design. It could be made into so many things. We made it into a table runner, but it would look just as amazing at, if it were a tote bag, quilt, wall hanging, pillow cover, or a lampshade. The options are really endless. Just like always, we start off by hooping up our hoop with the suggested stabilizer. We then go ahead and stitch the batting down and once stitched down we trim back all of the excess batting right up to the stitching. Stitch the placement line for the first background piece. Then go ahead and place your piece of fabric right side up covering the placement line and stitch down. Using your applique scissors, trim the two angled edges on the left hand side and then also on the right hand side you will notice a bit of a curve. We want to trim this part as well. We do not want to trim any of the other edges. Please refer back to the instructions for a more detailed photograph on how to complete this part. Stitch the placement line for the back triangle and then place the piece of fabric wrong side up on top of the hoop crossing over the placement line by about a quarter of an inch and then have the excess fabric pointing towards the top right hand corner of the block and stitch down. Fold that piece of fabric over against the stitching and stitch down again and then trim away all of the excess fabric. Stitch the placement line for the next background piece. We are now going to repeat the stitch down fold over process that we use for the back triangle for the middle triangle. Again, place your piece of fabric wrong side up covering the placement line, stitch down, then fold over and stitch down again. Use your applique scissors to trim away the excess fabric. Continue the same stitch down fold over process for the two corner triangles. However, with these two corner pieces, once they have been stitched down, make sure you do not trim any of the fabric. The excess fabric will be hidden in the seams later on. Now moving on to the butterfly, first begin by stitching the placement line for the first stage of the butterfly wing. Place the correct piece of fabric on top of the placement line and then stitch down. Trim away the excess fabric. Repeat the applique process for the next five stages of the butterfly. When you get to the butterfly body, make sure you leave the excess fabric in the seams. We are now up to embroidering the satin stitches and decorative stitches which really bring the butterfly to life. Please follow the diagram in the instructions to work out which satin stitch is next in the sequence. Once you have completed all of the embroidery, remove the hoop from the machine and then trim the seams to about half an inch. And there you have it, you have now finished your first butterfly block. 
Once you have all of your blocks made, lay them out on your work surface in the layout of your choice. To begin the joining process, place the first two blocks right sides together. Pin and stitch the seam using your sewing machine. We like to pin at one end of the blocks and then as we sew we lift up the top block and match the seam stitching with the seam stitching on the block underneath. Please use whatever method works best for you though. Now that you have the two blocks joined together, move over to your ironing board and iron the seams open. Continue this same pinning and stitching process until you have each horizontal row of blocks joined. Next, we are going to be joining our rows together. To do this, place the first two rows right sides together. Pin and stitch the seam together using your sewing machine. Move over to your ironing board and iron the seams open. Continue this same process until you have all of your rows joined together. We are now going to be adding our borders. Prepare your border fabric and batting. Place the table runner wrong side up on top of your border fabric with right sides together and pin along that edge. Using your sewing machine, stitch the two together using about a half inch seam. So that the batting doesn't create too much bulk in the seam, we are going to use our scissors to trim away the excess batting in the seam we have just sewn. Move over to your ironing board and iron the border over so it sits nice and flat. Repeat the above process to the border on the opposite side. Using a rotary cutter and ruler, trim away the excess border fabric and batting so they line up with the ends of the table runner. We are now going to be adding the borders to each end of the table runner. To do this, simply just use the same pinning and stitching process we used to join the side borders. have all of our borders attached we are now going to top stitch our borders and this will leave us with a neat finish and look to our table runner. If your borders are uneven and there is excess fabric from attaching the end borders simply just use your rotary cutter and ruler to neaten up the edges. The final stage of this project is to add the backing. Place the table runner wrong side up on top of the backing fabric so the right sides are together. Pin around the perimeter of the table runner to attach the two pieces. However, on one end, we want to leave a gap of about eight inches. This will allow us to turn the table runner out the right way at the end. Move over to your sewing machine and stitch the two together using a half inch seam, making sure you leave the gap open. Trim the seams to a quarter of an inch as well as clipping the corners so they turn out nice and pointy in the end. To finish the table runner, turn it the right sides out through the gap that you created earlier and then give the whole thing a good press with the iron. And there you have it everyone, a beautiful butterfly table runner. I hope you all enjoyed this month's sew along and we can't wait to see all of your beautiful creations.